Alrighty, it's that time that we're going to talk about special right triangles. These right triangles are special just like each and every one of you is just so special. Okay, so let's start. 45, 45, 90 triangle. This is a, of course, a right triangle. Whoop, there we go. And we have 45 degrees for those two angles, right? And of course, it's a right triangle. Now, what's cool about this? Well, if those two angles are the same or congruent, then these two guys are also congruent. Those two sides are congruent. All righty. Now, let's just say that we've got a side length of one here. Okay? And let's say that we've got a side length of one here then as well, because if they're congruent, they have to be the same, right? Well, what would that third side be? Hmm, if only there was a way to figure out a missing side when we've got two of them in a right triangle. Oh my goodness, Pythagorean theorem would do that. 1 squared plus 1 squared equals c squared, right? a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Well, that's 1 plus 1 is 2 equals c squared. And if I square root to undo the squared, c equals root 2. So this guy right here is root 2. Okay, now what's fun about a 45, 45, 90 triangle is our sides are always going to be in this ratio, okay? So we have a 1, a 1, and a root 2. So if our side length, let's say, is 5, and then this one would have to be 5, right? Well, this one right here is 5 root 2, okay? So let's generalize that even further. Let's say that this is x, then this guy is x, right? Because they're congruent, which would mean that this guy is x root 2. So whatever the one side is, you multiply by root 2 to get to the hypotenuse, the longest side, the side across from the right angle. Hmm, but how would we get back? Let's say we knew the length over here, right? and we wanted to get back to one of these sides. Well, if to get from here to here, we multiply by root two, to get from here back to here, we divide by root two. We'll work with that shortly. Let's, so let's talk about 45, 45, 90's best friend, the 30, 60, 90 triangle, shall we? Okay, if I got a 30, 60, 90 triangle, we're still talking about a right triangle, right? Boom. This guy will be our 30, and this guy will be our 60. Okay. So I'm going to make the smallest side 1 like we did before, okay? But now, I don't know what the other side is. I mean, intuitively, you'd think, well, across from a 30, you just, like, double it if it's across from a 60. But that's not the case. However, we can use something that we know from equilateral triangles. Check this out. I'm going to draw another 30, 60, 90 triangle right below it. Like I reflect it down, right? Like a vertical reflection, almost like across the you know, x-axis. That's pretty cool. That's math stuff. All right, so this guy is 60, and this guy is 30. So I've connected two 30, 60, 90 triangles. Hmm. Well, looky what I have here. This guy oops, is 60. This is 60. Add that up at 60. I've got an equilateral triangle. Well, if across from the 30 is 1, across from this 30 is also 1. So my side length of this equilateral triangle, the sides are all 2. 2 and 2. Well, how do I find that third side? I've got two sides now. I can find that third. Holy guacamole. I can do Pythagorean theorem, but we've got to be careful. I got a leg that's 1. I'm actually looking for the other leg, so we'll call that B squared, right? This is B. Okay, that's a kind of a B. There we go. Uh, that's a little better. Okay. And then we got our C squared is 2 squared. Let's do some math. B squared equals, well, 2 squared is 4. Minus 1 is 3. Square root. B equals square root 3. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and erase this bad boy, and we're going to pop a root 3 right there. And what you'll find is in all 30, 60, 90 triangles, we've got that same type of pattern. 
Okay, so much like the 45, 45, 90, we can call this x. This is 2x, and this is x times root 3. So to get from one side to the next, like if you've got if you've got this side, it's super easy. We just multiply by root 3 to get here, and we multiply by 2 to get here. If you got one of these guys, you're going to have to do a little division to undo it. Let's practice with that, okay? Alright, let's work with these special right triangles we know and love so much now. Uh, we got Jay-Z and Beyonce back at it with the uh, recording studio. They have actually decided on a 12-12 roof pitch for their new recording studio, which is different than a previous problem. Now, if the studio is 20 feet by 25 feet, so they've made some more changes, how many squares of metal roof should they order? Remember, squares means uh, 100 square feet. Okay, so we'll have to do a little bit more math at the end, it sounds like. But let's, uh, let's start working this bad boy. Well, if it's 20 by 25, I'm going to jot down 20 and 25, okay? And then, uh, and I'm just doing that based off of the looks of the actual building itself. You know, sometimes it's safe to assume stuff, sometimes it's not, but we can, we can see that that uh, is the longer side over there with the 25. Okay. So, hmm, how are we going to do this? Well, I've got this dimension roughly, right? This dimension right here is going to be the same as this guy down here, right? You know, because that makes a rectangle basically on that side elevation there with the garage doors. So the opposite sides are congruent in a rectangle. So I'm going to go with 25 feet. And yeah, there's a little bit of an overhang with the, uh, with the soffit as well. But uh, we'll, we'll deal with that later. Okay. So, we need this bad boy here, right? Because then this is going to make a rectangle. Now, I know from this angle it kind of looks like a parallelogram, but it's a, it is a rectangle, all right? It's a roof. It just from this angle, it looks a little funky. So, how are we going to figure out that, uh, that missing dimension? We don't know this guy right here. Hmm. I've got an idea because I'm just an idea type of dude. This right here... Well, that's a right triangle, right? Now, what do we think this uh, this bottom dimension might be right here, that the base of the triangle? Well, if you're thinking 10 feet because it's half, you are correct. Okay. Well, if that's 10 feet and it's a 12-12 roof, the rise and run are the same, so that's 10 feet. Holy cow. Let's think back to the previous slide there where we talked about a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Those two legs are the same. And if those two legs are the same, what's across from it? Oh, 10 root 2. That is cool. Now, for our purposes, you know, in the construction world, I'm going to say we're going to multiply out 10 root 2. All right, you could Pythagorean theorem that bad boy, right? You could do 10 squared plus 10 squared equals some, you know, Something or yeah, 10 squared plus 10 squared equals something squared, and solve for it that way. That's totally fine as well. This is just another way. So 10 root 2 is approximately 14.14. Okay, feet. So without actually having to get up on a ladder and do all that stuff and hold a tape measure up there, have it fall 18 million times as you're trying to measure it, boom, you've got. An easy, quick way to figure it out based on the roof pitch and your dimensions of your actual building. Okay. All right, so now uh, let's go ahead and figure out some of the square footage. So when I type this in my calculator, I am going to use 10 root 2 just because it's more accurate than 14.14. As I round, the measurements get a little bit off, but, you know, it, it, as long as it's pretty close, it is, it is good. But for these purposes, let's use the exact for now. And I'm going to multiply that by 25. So when I plug that in, I get 353.655, so 6 will round it up. Okay, and there are two elevations, so if I multiply that by 2, if I, you know, two sides to the roof, right, I'm going to get 707.1. So I'm a little over 800, or a little over 700 square feet. Now, if I want to incorporate say, let's go with 10%. Let's go 10% overage on this one. Um, if I do that, I would need to multiply this guy by 10% to get what the overage would be and then add the 707 in. Or 
check this out. If I multiply by one point, in this case one zero or just one, okay, if I do that, that gives me what my total square footage should be, 777.8 with that 10% overage, right? 10% of 707 is about 70. Add that on, I get, you know, 777. So that's pretty cool. Um, so how many squares do we need? Well, if it's 100 square feet for every square, um, we're looking at about eight squares. And I rounded up on that, okay? So we're getting eight squares of this metal roofing for their uh, super cool recording studio. America. All right, so now we got Justin Bieber doing some exterior work, and he needs a ladder to get to a high spot. Now, his ladder that he has is 10 feet, and it makes a 60-degree angle with the ground. So this angle right here is 60 degrees, okay? How high up the wall will the ladder reach? Hmm. Well, that's 60, and I know this is a right angle. Oh, let's hope that it's a right angle. This is not the Leaning Tower of Pisa he's dealing with. Then I know that this guy is 30 degrees because all the angles should add up to 180 in a triangle. Look at that. Coming back. Full circle. America. All righty. Ooh, wait. Hold up. Hold the phone. This is one of our special right triangles. Across from the 30 is 1. Across from the 60 is root 3, and over here is 2. So what I, what I can do is I can figure out the missing sides using this, okay? So this could be like 2x, this could be x root 3, and this could be 1x, okay? So you can set this up as a proportion, like a super proportion, or you could figure it out algebraically. We're going to do both, okay? So... If 10 is my 2x, 10 equals my 2x, what's x going to equal? Well, if I divide by 2, x equals 5. Boom. So now I've got 5 feet here. And if x is 5 and over here is x root 3, then this is going to be 5 root 3 feet. There's my answer. And 5 root 3, if we wanted to uh, type that into our calculator to get a decimal approximation, 5 root 3 is approximately 8.66. Look at that. Awesome. Okay, now the other way we can do this is with a, uh, a proportion setup. And the same would work with your 45, 45, 90 triangles. So if I've got my different sides of a 30, 60, 90. I've got 1, root 3, and 2. And this is across from the 30, the 60, and the 90. 30, 60, 90. That is important with what goes where. Okay. I know what's across from my 90 that was 10 feet, right? But I don't know this guy, and I don't know this guy. So I can do some cross multiplication to figure it out. So if I were to just look at this one and this one, I would do 1 times 10 is 10 equals 2 times y is 2y, and I get y equals 5, just like we got before for my you know, short side. And then I could also do it with the other one. I would have 10 root 3, right? If I cross multiply, I'd get 10 root 3 equals 2x, and if I divide by 2, running out of space here, I'm going to make things a little smaller. If I divide by 2, 10 divided by 2 is 5 root 3 equals x. And look at that, I got the same answer. Okay? So you could go about this either way. You can set up a proportion if that makes you feel comfortable. You could, uh, you know, do it like we did uh, at first there in the red ink. That is totally fine. All right. The same would go for a 45, 45, 90 triangle, which we could, uh, why don't I put that on a new slide? So as I was saying, you could also set this up with a 45, 45, 90. You would just have one, one, 
and root 2. So if you have a couple sides, right, let's say that this one's 3, and let's say that these guys are both 45, so they are congruent. So then I'd have across from a 45 would be 3, right? This is 45, 45, 90. So across from there is a 3, which would mean that this would obviously have to be 3, so you really don't need two of these, you only need one. But I am missing this side here. So pop an X there, I can cross multiply and solve. So if I do that, I would have 1x equals 3 root 2, so x equals 3 root 2. Perfect. America.